to welcome you to today's one-hour webinar entitled Introduction to Simulation, Part 3 of the five-part Predictive Analytics webinar series. Today's webinar is brought to you by Performance G2. Performance G2 is a full-service business analytics consultancy that provides analytics solutions, services, and software, including Cognos on-site and online training, financial performance management, data management, and consulting to organizations. Performance G2 is a premier IBM Cognos Business Analytics partner, IBM Cognos Business Analytics reseller, and IBM Cognos support provider certified. I will be your moderator today, and I would like to introduce you to today's host, Drew Pulvermacher, Director of Predictive Analytics for Performance G2. Drew has over a decade of experience in analytics, focusing on improving enterprise value through the use of operation research methodologies for enhancing productivity, efficiency, and profitability at organizations. Before we get started, I would like to inform you that we will have a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. Um, you can always submit your questions by filling out the Q&A box that is located on your control panel on your screen, or you can also submit questions to us via email at info at performance2.com. This webinar will be recorded, and a recording will be sent to all registrants as soon as it is available. So without further ado, I'm going to turn the floor over to Drew to start the Introduction to Simulation webinar. Thank Drew, you, Candice. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone, and happy spring. Uh, thanks again for joining today's session. I am, again, always excited to spend this time with you and walk through today's session of uh, simulation modeling. So during the next 45 to 60 minutes, we will direct this message uh, to those in the audience who are exploring the space of simulation for maybe the first time. Uh, my intent here is to share with you high-level examples of how simulation modeling improves analysis and the decision-making process. So, you know, this, this talk, this talk uh, technology agnostic, we are IBM partner, um, but my, my caveat here is technology fit comes in downstream. As a service provider uh, and partner, for us G2, uh, we help to identify the issues, provide bench strength, and deliver value by leveraging advanced analytics for your organization. Uh, today, as we review the value simulation modeling um, for your internal decision-making process, we will cover the what, why, when, how, which, and who of simulation. Um, before we do that, I want to go over the reason for being here. Uh, simulation modeling is essentially a what-if analysis on steroids. Uh, the main difference is that simulation modeling provides you with meaningful information. Uh, first, simulation is the cure for the flaw of averages, and that is what we covered in session one. Uh, second, it allows you to embed uncertainty into your business, what we covered in session two. And third, we go, uh, enables leadership with valuable information to better assess business risk, what we're covering today. Uh, we'll come back to this main point throughout the webinar. Uh, my main goal, I want to be your point person for all things simulation optimization, whether it's technology, building the models, training, or providing coaching. Uh, if you are not using simulation modeling today, I would encourage you to look for opportunities where modeling uncertainty will provide value for you and your company. Um, after today's call, please please write me. I'd love to hear what, what you're doing. Um, so what is simulation modeling? So a simulation model is a computer model that imitates a real life situation, such as the NCAA Final Four tournament. A side note here, if anyone um, in attendance today is interested in seeing this year's bracket in action, uh, ping Candace on your go to meeting controls. There should be a, a question box up there. You can say, yeah, Candace, I'm, I'm interested in seeing it after today's webinar, and I'll bring it up after the Q&A session. Uh, da -da -da -da. See what's sorry, lost, lost my train of thought here. Okay, so sim models are like other mathematical models, uh, but then incorporate certainty in one or more input variables. So, for example, this 4.5 could be input input variable. Um, if you're brave enough to sit through the first two webinars, you know that the core concept of predictive analytics is dealing with uncertainty. Simulation modeling enables us to better incorporate uncertainty into our organization. Now remember, those who are winning with predictive analytics are replacing this number, so let's call it the 
with this, a distribution. And today, we will now dive deeper into how this all works. So the fundamental advantage of simulation models is that it shows an entire distribution of results, not simply a single bottom line result. And this gives your decision maker greater insight to manage risk in the face of uncertainty. So why use simulation modeling in your business? If I told you that you could triple your income of your business by using simulation modeling, would you start exploring it? If you could take a product from 90 million to $400 million in less than 18 months, would you be curious enough to incorporate some of these concepts into your own modeling? Um, I'm gonna show you a few of these right now. So the answer to the, to the why, I'm gonna throw out a few teas. well, I'm actually, we're gonna go through a teaser question, um, followed, followed by walking through a retail scenario, um, and then I'll, in the help process along, we'll take a, a little mental break to provide two other examples of, of blackjack and your 401, and then we'll come back to a teaser answer. I'd say in quotes because you're not really gonna get the answer today. Um, so let's go, let's go through the teaser right now. So I mentioned at the beginning, simulation modeling is what if analysis on steroids. So let's start from there. Now, you're in the business of making money. You make money by producing a product and selling it. So let's review three things here. Um, the units that you sell, you make a profit of $10 per unit. But if you quote a customer, and you can't deliver that product, you're gonna lose $5 on that, and you have plant capacity to make 100 units per day. The question, what utilization rate should we maintain to maximize our, our profit? Now, traditional what-if analysis would say, okay, give me my utilization rate, zero to 100%. At 10%, I'm making 10 units per day. At 100%, I'm making 100 units a day. And, oh, here's our target, we should, produce 100 units per day because we'll sell them all and we'll make $1,000 in profit, all right? So right there, this is where we need to stop, okay? So let's focus on one variable here, plant capacity. Currently, we're using a point estimate. Simulation replaces that point estimate with a shape. Depending on what that shape looks like, we'll have a different answer than just keeping the plant running at 100%. Traditional what if uses inputs that are misleading. Averages are misleading, resulting in outputs that are meaningless. Whereas simulation embeds real world performance and the resulting outputs provide you with meaningful information. What you get from simulation opens up the door to start talking about probabilities in terms of achieving results, the likelihood of failing, um, and provides you with a better idea of what to expect in the future. Traditional what-if analysis uh, results in conversations that are just inappropriate for, for this audience. Um, essentially, it's the results you get will continue to dis disappoint. So here's, let's go to a retail scenario here. Um, if, if simulation modeling is so useful, uh, why aren't the majority of companies using it right now? And there's there's multiple answers to this, but I want to walk through this scenario as a scenario that we're, we're going to talk to the CEO of the company, okay? So today, May 15th, 2014, your team has to submit a sales forecast for this year's Black Friday event, an event that is six months in the future from now. Let me ask you a couple questions here. Your team completes its due diligence and you provide a forecast to the executive team. You say $5.5 billion. And this estimate is based on this range between $3.9 and $8.2 billion. So a number that's six months from now, which one is more, would you say is more accurate? Um, if I asked this in the past, most people say, well, it's this one right here, the range, because 5.5, I know it's not gonna be exactly 5.5, but it's between this range based on our assumptions. Which one do we use? We use 5.5, the point estimate. Why do we use this? Because which estimate would be easier to use when establishing a budget? This one, 
holding people accountable, this one, 5.5, uh, defending an audit of how the information generated, this one. Ultimately, companies, well, executives, they do not have permission to be uncertain. uncertain. So how do we help leadership decision makers in the organization use simulation modeling to make better decisions? Um, and you're not going to give them all these statistical models, but you still want to get that one point estimate to them. This is what simulation, this is the power of simulation right here. You combine a point estimate, this $5.5 billion, with a likelihood estimate. So chance of missing our sales by of $5.5 billion is 35%. Okay. Um, I went through that kind of quick, and this is where I want to take a mental break here for a second. Like, oh, what, what, how do we how do we use all this stuff? So mental break, let's get out of business for a second. We're playing blackjack. Goal blackjack is to get close to 21 without going over, right? Your hand, you have an eight and a seven. It's a hand of 15, okay? The dealer has a card of six up. 15 versus six. How would you play your hand? And how will probabilities help you in your decision-making process? If you hit, you have a 70% chance of losing. Or, put it another way, 30% chance of winning. But if you stay, the risk, you shift that risk to the dealer. 60, 65% chance that the dealer will bust. Or, 65% chance that you'll win. Right? So, in other words, would you rather have a 30% chance of winning or a 65% chance of winning? Knowing those odds right there, you just doubled your expected profit by a single decision based on probability. And all this is due from doing simulation modeling. Another example, <clears throat> excuse me, you have 401k and you're gonna roll it over into another investment account. Um, you have two financial firms that you are interviewing where you're willing to invest your money. The first firm states that they have a 10 year portfolio return of 25%. Uh, the second firm says, you know what, our 10-year rate of return is 15%. What's missing here? Over the 10 years, how many times did your respective portfolios have a negative return? Firm one, well, 15%. We had a we had returns less than, well, negative returns. Um, firm two, 5%. So without the likelihood estimate, we really can't compare these two these two options. So which firm do we choose? And here's the, probably one of the most important things to keep in mind about simulation and predictive analytics as a whole. Uh, it depends on your personal risk tolerance. The portfolio returns in the future are uncertain. We know that. You have complete control on how you manage risk. So uncertainty does not equal risk. That that's kind of a, that's a key concept right here. Uh, by recognizing uncertainty exists in our business, and by modeling this uncertainty with simulation, you you enable decision makers to better manage risk. So <laughs> let me I'm gonna slow down for a second. I gotta put this up here because it is it's important. Uncertainty does not equal risk. We need to we need to recognize uncertainty exists in our business, and we need to model that uncertainty. You know, enable decision makers. You now, oh, misspelling. <laughs> you now enable decision makers to make better decisions. Um, I'm gonna slow down. Go back here to this Black Friday, Black Friday sales forecast. So we know uncertainty exists. We know there's risk in the business. Decision makers want to know what that risk is. So we're combining a point estimate, 5.5, with a likelihood estimate of missing 35%. Our range, so okay, I have 5.5, give me a few more numbers. 3.9, well, 10% chance we will be under $3.9 billion. 8.2, well, there's a 90% chance we'll actually miss it. There's a 10% chance we'll go above it. Okay, so that's very, very high level right now. Um, going back to our original example, what should our utilization rate be? 
So we're going to replace our capacity input variable here. Right? So that's a point estimate. That's the average with a production range. Our range is, well, minimum, we could produce 85 units. Most likely, yes, it's 100. Maximum, 105. Okay? With this, we now know that 75% chance of production will be less than 100%, 100 units. Um, would you quote your customers that you could deliver 100 units per day knowing this information? And this is where I like the, the personal face-to-face -face conversations versus the webinar. Um, hopefully you're saying, oh, that is a huge risk right now. I'm going to ratchet that down. Okay. So when would you use simulation modeling? These are just off the top of the head. This is stuff that we've dealt with before in the, pa in the past. Uh, patient flow within hospitals, uh, meeting an order due date, kind of like what we just went over uh, with, the, with the utilization rate. Um, simulating the long-term value of a customer, reducing the churn of your customers, a warranty cost for a product, tampering with the stable process, modeling customer loyalty, inventory modeling, and estimating dynamic, dynamic market share, corporate fb &A. I just broke one of my core PowerPoint rules of never read what's on the screen. Um, but essentially, wherever there is uncertainty, and there's always uncertainty when trying to predict the future, simulation modeling provides value to the business. Okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. So how does simulation work? I'm going to present two, example, two examples. Uh, first one, looking at product demand, and the second one on forecasting a commodity. So the classic, classic introduction of simulation modeling is called the news vendor model. The news vendor model relates to any type of what's termed birth death scenario. For example, uh, newspapers. You have today to sell today's news. Demand for yesterday's news isn't hot right now, or news that was a month old, right? Or produce. produce. Uh, would you buy three-month-old milk at the grocery store? Another, another great example is fashion. Uh, fashion is a very classic example, actually. Um, what's hot now will not be hot next season. And as mentioned at the beginning of this talk, Black Friday. Black Friday fits perfectly with this news vendor model. Um, a one-day event where there's a lot of money on the line and you're making a really big decision six months before you put all that product into your stores. Uh, because this example is going to be fairly straightforward, I'm going to be using Excel to model a purchase decision within the fashion industry. So let me take five seconds. Oh, here's the basketball bracket. I'm going to close that down. News vendor. So we're going to decide to buy the shoe. As a buyer, uh, you know that lead times can be longer than three months. So the buyers are putting in orders in for in win during winter um, in preparation for the spring season. So let's take a look at this item. It's going to cost us nine hundred dollars per unit. Well, I guess consider shoes, two shoes, one unit, um, selling price of $1,600. And whatever we don't sell in season, we'll sell in the aftermarket for sure at $400, okay? So how many of these shoes do you order to maximize profit? That is our objective. Marketing will tell you, well, you know what? Our average demand for this type of, this type of product at this price point we will see uh, um, 175 orders come through during during the season. And you know because you took a short little introductory class on simulation modeling and you know about the flaw of averages, like, well, yeah, 175. Uh, give, me, give me your range here. What's our, you know, what's our minimum expected demand for the shoe? What's the maximum? So they tell you, well, minimum, we'll sell 120. Yes, most likely it's still 175, maximum 250. 50 units, okay? So now we have a good base. Um, we'll, we'll model out some economics here. Step one, the cost to overstock. So this is we buy too many and we can't sell them all within season. 
So that would be $500 per unit of what we don't sell. The cost of understock, and this would be the opportunity cost, we don't buy enough to meet demand, we lose $700 in missed profit. Okay, second step. Please let me know if I'm going too fast here. I'll try to slow myself down here. Um, let's let's kind of model this stuff out. So let's just take our order amount. We're just going to match this to the average demand right now, okay, just to make this point. Um, 175, we're going to match average demand. If demand is 100% accurate, we will not have any overstock units or understock units, okay? Question, has anyone ever forecasted a specific product at SKU level with 100% accuracy, especially if it was three to six months out? Um, you know, if you say yes, I, I totally want to, I want to talk to you. Step three, let's put together a P&L here, okay? So sales on 175 units, uh, $280,000, product costs, I'm rounding up, $158,000. Uh, product margin, 43.8%. We're not going to have overstock, we're not going to have understock. Guess what? Our expected profit is, let me round this up here, 44%, okay? Now, let's do a quick simulation here. So I'm going to take this, this right here, this distribution. Let me see if I can graph that out. Here is your distribution. I'm going to put this right here. Have you ever seen the movie Groundhog's Day? We're going to have like a Groundhog Day experience here. I'm going to run this scenario 10,000 times, and I want to see what the odds are. Actually, I'm going to go 175 again here that our expected profit is going to be less than $122,000. 10,000, actually, I just want to run it once. I'll get to $22,000. There is, I'm doing this really quick, a 98.3% chance that our expected profit off this shoe by ordering 175 units will be less than $122,000. Right off the bat, that provides value for your decision makers. Um, you see how it stops right here? This gets into that opportunity cost. We did not buy enough to, to get that 250. If we did put in 250, going off tangent a little bit here, I just wanted to kind of make this point. Let's order 250 to meet maximum demand. What does that profit curve look like? You yeah, actually reduce it. So 122 last time was 98.3% chance of being less than 122,000. Actually reduced to 80% chance. And there's a 20% chance you will make it more than that. Okay. It's a very, very quick model, but it's extremely useful, especially when making a purchasing decision. Um, <clears throat> let me get back here to the, the PowerPoint. I'm going to save this. Don't save. News vendor. Um, yeah, so one of, one of the greatest benefits here of simulation modeling is the ability to speed up analysis and decision making. Um, if any of you have ever heard the term data latency, uh, data latency is basically refers to inefficiencies of collecting data, analyzing that data, and then making a decision based on the analysis. Um, so business intelligence tools like, like Cognos basically eliminate this gap and part of this and predictive analytics helps close much of this gap right here and helps improve uh, this process out here. So we're going to take a look um, at how fast we can improve a forward-looking estimate as it relates to pricing futures in the commodity world. I'll use, I'll use Excel again because um, I know that most people engage on these type of calls and presentations. Not everyone's running on the same type of platform, but most people are familiar with Excel. So futures. Let's say we are dealing with pork bellies. Um, each month, we are going to buy 10,000 units of pork bellies. To reduce our financial risk, we want to put in future 
future contracts with our suppliers. So the question, how long is it, well, actually, this is kind of a, how long would you guess it takes a company to provide a forecast for the next 12 months for this one product? Um, back and forth, the medians, everything else, what type of model do you put in place? Um, and if I was able to tell you, or if you were able, actually, if you were able to reduce your forecast error rate from 20% to 6%, how would that benefit your company? Uh, here we have 20 years of daily pork belly pricing. Here's the, here's the raw data. Corn was going to come in at a later date. Um, uh, sorry, uh, 20 years, so this 20 years pork belly, belly pricing. Um, I'm not going to go too deep on uh, the technicals that are behind the scenes here, but first I'm, going to, I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do with just a couple buttons here, okay? So our, our raw historical data, I want to forecast out. So this is where I'm not going to get into the technicals of what I'm actually doing. I'm saying, okay, I want a monthly forecast and I want 12 forecasts and I'm going to just choose a method. The only reason why I'm doing this is to show you how fast simulation is, okay? That just spit out a forecast number for us. I'm going to put it here. This red line is now our forecast for 2013 by month. And I have the actuals. If I plop the actuals in, my variance for that entire year is 6.3%. Um, that entire process took less than, I don't know, what was it, 15, 20 seconds of information we really didn't know maybe anything about. Um, it gave us a good shape of what we could what we could predict based on historical information. This gets into the concept of systematic and unsystematic risk. So the corn price, I'm not going to put it in here today because that's kind of a, another step up. If we know that the price is getting out of line of our forecast, in um, commodities, but it also deals with our products and our customers as well. So I'm going to close this one down. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, PowerPoint, PowerPoint. There it is. Right there. Okay. All right. Where, where were we? So we, we layered on 2013. We got the Office of Finance, uh, patient flow. This is kind of a, another important concept to talk about. The people say, okay, we want to use a simulation package and you showed us this one, the NCAA bracket was actually a, a great example a few months ago. And we work at the hospital, we want, we want to use what you just had. Um, there's, there's a lot of different software out there and it all depends on what your issue is. So simulation modeling, yes, it's extremely beneficial. Um, and hospital activity, this is kind of a, a special case, and it deals with manufacturing and, and service industries as well. Um, so I showed a simulation in Excel, and we, Performance G2, have products where you can actually model out, um, you know, retail sectors, everything else, as well as hospitals. So we can model out activity of customers, patients, um, parts, products, entering a system, and that system could be based on those customers being served, uh, your patients being cared for, and those parts being produced or distributed. Um, simulation models like these are kind of outside of today's scope, but they're available. At the beginning of the session, I mentioned this talk would be technology agnostic, right? And this is the reason why I wanted to set up this talk that way. Um, I don't want to say blindly say, use this product, it's going to solve all your needs. The technology has to serve the business, not the other way around. Um, so as a premier IBM partner, Performance G2 delivers solutions such as SPSS. So why would anyone want to use SPSS? I'm going to walk through high level <laughs> where SPSS really provides a great value for a company. Um, going back to our Black Friday example, let's say we're we have to predict 2014 Black Friday sales. So 2012 was $65 million, 2013 or 67 million. You know what, just based off of the, those two point estimates, I'd say 
2014 is between 63 and 69 million dollars. That's my range. Fantastic. Um, but wait, you're not just forecasting high level, you're now forecasting sales for 45 different store locations, each with 90 different product departments, not 90 different products, product departments. And the big craze right now with um, with big data, you hear, you know what, we want to put our temperature, our weather patterns in there, the unemployment rates and fuel prices by these by market area. This is where SPSS earns its gold star right now, okay? Um, do not copy this, I just threw this together right here. Um, in SPSS, you enter your, your historical information, any features like weather, unemployment, fuel costs, anything else that you want to throw in there, big data shifts. Um, you define, you test, and you continually improve your model. So when new information or questions come up, you're able to quickly turn around analysis and support your manager's needs. That gets back into that data latency um, graph that I showed up before. Actually, I think it's right here. So whereas that question of forecasting holiday sales, well, Black Friday sales for 45 stores and 90 different product groups, that could take weeks, months at the organizational level to put all that stuff together. Um, but with the data, the data collection, the analysis, this takes up one of the greatest chunks of time. All that is almost, I don't want to say it's completely removed, but it definitely um, improves and it helps the decision-making process speed up a lot more there. Um, next one, real world results. So this is the who of simulation. Who is using simulation? Who's been using it for a long time? Um, Wells Fargo, uh, they're using it for internal budgeting processes. So departments have their own little budgets. Those budgets, they have distributions around them and they all roll up to the CFO. Uh, Lockheed Martin, uh, with its cost estimates, uh, UPS and Chevron with their decision models. Uh, I know the Chevron's been using it for, for geez, six, 60 years now, and they have about 200 employees that just focus on uh, decision support systems using simulation modeling. And my favorite, uh, the Lego group. So Lego, Lego completely transformed its operating model. A few years ago, the company was recovering from essentially a, a near-death financial crisis inside the company. Using simulation modeling throughout its core processes, the company was able to basically weave this risk management concept into, into all the departments throughout the organization. Um, there was a, there's a great article on it in the Wall Street Journal. It came out last year, yeah, August 5th, 2013 here. So if the if this if this topic is of interest to you, you want to explore this a little bit more in more detail, uh, we'd love to help you out. The term analytics here covers a whole host of options to help improve decision making and apply to specific um, say business issues. Uh, analytics should be applied to your business objective, but don't fit the objective to an analytical method. So simulation is it's a powerful modeling tool uh, to have handy and be able to, to use whenever you deal with uncertainty. Uh, again, if you want to learn more, please con contact me, contact us at Performance G2. Um, I'm, I'm giving you guys a bunch of time back today. I want to thank you for your audience. Candace, I'm going to turn the mic over to you now. We'll do some, uh, some Q&A, and again, if you want to see that basketball, uh, the NCAA bracket, we can, we can work through that. So set up to, to show you the odds of Wisconsin winning the entire, the entire tournament. So thank you again. Candace, I'm going to turn it over to you. Great. Thank you, Drew, for the presentation. Um, at this point, everyone, we do have some questions to go, go over today. Uh, if you do have questions that you think of, again, use the questions box on your control panel on your screen, or you can email me at info at performancesheet2.com. I am on my email, so I will see that come through. Uh, the first question for you, Drew, is how do you introduce simulation as a solution for helping define a business problem? Uh, to introduce simulation, let's say, uh, I, first, carefully. Um, it's kind of through, 
uh, informal introduction. So I'll provide a few examples, like the first one, um, choosing, not using the, their business right away, but the choice to choose between one or two streams. And we cover this in the first session. Um, if you're out walking with your kid and you got to choose between crossing the stream on your left, those on average two feet deep, or the one on the right that's on average three feet deep, which one would you choose? Most people say two feet because, and why? Less risk of drowning. Um, and that's when you kind of bring in this concept of distribution. Well, you go one foot, one foot, one foot, 20 feet, one foot, one foot, one foot. So that, that average number alone hides um, the uncertainty of drowning. So that's that's when you start uncovering, oh, we, we should actually know what our, our numbers look like. So then when you get start getting into the meetings here, uh, talking about variances, perfor uh, variance performances, um, you know, stay, stay clear of the jargon, don't use the word Monte Carlo simulation, but when you're in a meeting and an average is mentioned, it's like, oh, you know what, that 4.5, what does that 4.5 look like? And it start, people start asking more questions like, oh yeah, this, you know, now we can start working with the kind of the natural variation of our, our business. Um, so to introduce it, I give a simple example, kid crossing the stream, and then um, I, I definitely try to focus on, all right, you have an average. Let's see what that average looks like. So those are my first two methods to introduce simulation modeling without getting too technical. Okay, great. Thank you, Drew. Um, the next question is, in the utilization example and the fashion example, what were the answers? Okay, so uh, <laughs> uh, the, the answer um, is produced through a concept known as optimization modeling. That is the subject of next month's webinar. So simulation is the core component within optimization. Um, and the next component will be uh, constraints as well. So we go back to session one, session two, reviewed that predictive analytics starts with an objective function and then is supported by the variables that go that impact the objective, and then we layer on constraints or the business rules, that the the expert opinion. Um, so as there isn't really a right answer, but the optimal one, the best solution. So I will I'll bring those examples in next month and show you how optimization helps helps improve. Actually, gives you the best answer. So I can't give it right now. Okay, thanks, Drew. What do you do if you don't have a distribution? Okay, so there's there's three distributions I had uh, on, on the call today. They're all triangular distributions, and the suggestion of that viewpoint, I'm beginning to agree with it. You start with that triangular, right? So if you don't have a distribution, Use your best guess for minimum, most likely, and your max. Um, as additional information comes in, that's when you should start uh, redefining or re, I say, actually improving your distribution to match real world results. So I'd say, if you don't have one, start with a triangular distribution, min, most likely, max. Okay, thank you, Drew. The next question is, how long does it take to build a simulation model? It, 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 it depends on the objective being modeled, but it can uh, easily be put together in less than a week. It can be put together in, in a day. Um, the, ex the exercise alone uh, is going to surface a lot of different questions, and you're going to go down a road of exploring uh, different ways to improve the business before the entire model is complete. So it could take less than a week. It, I've also worked on ones that take about three months, and that's on the healthcare side because there's a lot of different um, aspects to the model. But the but the practice alone, just going down and saying, here's our objective, here's our variables, and start investigating, that's where a lot of value is uncovered in the business. So if I can go back to that um, data latency model they had up there before, uh, this is where the benefit of having like a BI tool, like a Cognos, um, is really useful because you're going to surface up questions that you're going to need answers to. 
Um, so you don't want to have you don't want to wait three days to get that answer back by pulling data. You want to have easy access to it. So that was a long winter, winded answer. It depends, um, but start start the exercise if you can't do it during the day. Um, research it research it at night. Give us a call. Definitely definitely want to help you out. So they're they're easy to put together. I'm gonna stop right there because I keep on going long. Um, get passionate about this stuff. Thanks, Drew. Um, the next question is, can you speak a little bit about how to get the probabilities of the outcome if a company hasn't done this before? Yes, yeah, so I kind of need the different variables. So can I, I can pull up that Excel model again. Um, so you're gonna, have, you're gonna have your different variables that go in. So you can say like average selling price, average cost per unit, um, I'm missing out. I'm going to keep correlation to the side here. But when all those variables start interacting, what you get as an output is another distribution. And that distribution is a range of, say, expected profit. Um, and with that expected profit, you're going to get a range that, okay, if our expected profit in the middle, the average is $50, you can easily say, see, you know what, there's a 25% chance that it's going to be less than this. And within that, within those numbers, you can see what variables play have the biggest impact um, on that risk, and that's where that improvement start improvement actually starts um, getting inside the company, where you can start focusing in on these variables to start reducing the variability, or tr I don't want to say controlling um, that variable, but you're able to you, you're able to start putting more pressure on on those different variables to improve your risk. Hopefully that answers answers the question. Um, but once you have your variables, you start modeling it, modeling it, your output will be another distribution and you can kind of, you will be able to see um, what your probabilities are. I could, if it's, uh, if it's useful, I can actually run the basketball simulation. And that's a question. So, if um, you're still kind of confused, we can we can go off the line, or we can put something on on the screen and kind of walk through it together. But your output will have those probabilities. Okay, thank you, Drew. Um, that's all the questions that we had today. Thank you guys very much for joining our webinar. We will have the fourth uh, webinar of this five-part series next month, so we will be sending out um, emails, invitations about that to you guys, as well as a recording of today's webinar. Um, if you did end up having more questions that you thought of uh, you know, on your own time, please feel free to connect with us. You can um, go directly to our Twitter page, twitter.com slash performance G2. You can always submit questions there. Uh, Drew, if you would like to advance the next slide, um, there's oh, yes, a phone sir. number on that slide. And the phone number is 877-742-4276. You can give us a call, or of course you can email us at either of the emails that you see on your screen right now. Uh, visit our website, and we do have a blog page on our website, which has a lot of really wonderful predictive analytics and Cognos um, information on that, as well as our YouTube page, which has Cognos and predictive analytics uh, videos. On that note, I would like to thank Drew for his presentation today. To let everyone know, um, we will be again. We will be sending out another um, invite for next month's webinar, and of course, a recording of today's webinar. If you have any other questions, please feel free to contact us. Otherwise, Drew, do you have anything else you would like to add? No, other than thank you very much for your time today. Today. <laughs>